Hello, everybody, and welcome to the St. Francis Hospital Cardiac Imaging Didactic Series. As a cardiologist, you may be called to assess the mitral valve in the operating room. And in addition to giving the surgeon adequate information on the severity of mitral regurgitation, the location of mitral regurgitation, and the mechanism of mitral regurgitation, it is also very important to assess for parameters that may predispose the patient for LVOT obstruction after a mitral repair. LVOT obstruction after mitral repair can be pretty much catastrophic because it can lead to obstruction of forward flow through the aorta, resulting in a low stroke volume and cardiogenic shock, and because of the systolic anterior motion of the mitral leaflet, it can cause concomitant mitral regurgitation, which can also be severe, thereby elevating pulmonary pressures and causing pulmonary edema with difficulty in oxygenating the patient. And the postoperative scenario is typically the surgeon uh, and the anesthesiologist can't get an adequate blood pressure at the same time they're on maximum inotropes. And as we know, inotropic therapy is not the appropriate treatment for LVOT obstruction, but that's for a separate uh, lecture. What is important for us is to identify the LVOT obstruction in the operating room so that appropriate treatment can commence. But even more important, it's important in our initial preoperative evaluation to make sure that we assessed for risk factors that may predispose this patient for this postoperative complication. And this can significantly affect decision-making if a valve should be repaired or replaced. Let's see what we have with our first case. So in the operating room, the first thing we see is a live 3D zoom of the anterior mitral valve. And as you can see in 3D, the leaflets look like they're redundant and prolapsing into the left atrium in a very generalized fashion, which gives us the suspicion of a Barlow's leaflet. By adding color, we can clearly see that the coaptation plane of mitral regurgitation is far and wide and it's not isolated to one single point. 2D imaging also gives us more specific information. And here we can see that the leaflets are thickened, redundant with extreme significant bileaflet prolapse and severe mitral regurgitation. We can see that the prolapse is marked and this is typically described as a Barlow's valve, which would not be easy to repair. Uh, however, with various techniques, it can be repaired. This intercommissural view further gives us an insight into really how extensive the coaptation zone for the mitral regurgitation is. Now, how do we assess if this patient is risk for developing SAM after a repair, even if the repair was very, very successful and you had traced to mild MR? These are the various parameters. Um, including the aortic mitral, mitral angle of less than 120, a small LVOT diameter, a large basal septal thickness, and a ratio of the anterior leaflet and the posterior leaflet, greater a ratio greater than 15. There are other things, including C-septal zone, and we're gonna go through each in this patient and see what we can predict. So this gives us an idea of what the landmarks are. 
the aortal mitral angle is best calculated using QLab software or on the echo cart, and it can be done rather quickly. But that I'm going to leave for a separate video so it can then be done properly and this way not to prolong this video. And uh, septal thickness is obviously the thickest view that you see uh, perpendicular to the long axis of the septum. And the C-septal angle is a line drawn from this septal thickness to where both the anterior and posterior mitral leaflets coapt. So in this still frame, we can see that we measure the LVOT in this area here. And it's interesting, you're not supposed to measure the LVOT as much here, where it, where it would be when you're doing aortic valve area calculations for the continuity equation, but you should measure it here uh, if it's narrower, and often there may be no difference. Here is slightly narrower, and our LVOT diameter is 21.7 millimeters. As to the septum, it's significantly thickened at 22.7 millimeters. The C septal distance is taken from this location here, where we measure the septum, and is taken to the coaptation point of the anterior and posterior mitral leaflets. Furthermore, we can measure the distances or the lengths of these two leaflets. And here we have a ratio that is 1.59, which means that we are at increased risk for postoperative SAM and LVOT obstruction. In addition, this is how we calculate the aortal mitral angle with a QLAP software. Now that we have all this information, we need to, to convey this to the surgeon. And there is no specific score for risk factors. So in general, note that the more parameters that are present, the more risk you have. So convey your concern with the measurements of the surgeon uh, based on these parameters and also on prior experience to determine if the person is low, intermediate, or high risk for developing post-operative SAM. This patient had a high anterior-posterior ratio of leaflet lengths greater than 1.5. In addition, this patient also had cortal SAM on the baseline echo images, and that made him high risk for developing SAM postoperatively. And in general, if you have baseline SAM or baseline cortal SAM, it's not a good starting parameter for uh, going forward with mitral valve repair. So the question is, what do you do here? Mitral valve replacement or mitral valve repair? Based on my prior experience and these parameters, I would favor a mitral valve replacement. However, since the patient is very young, the surgeon is leaning more towards a repair. So it's very important that they have all this valuable information. So what happens next? Well, not to make this much longer than it is, for now we have reviewed all the necessary parameters that can arm you with the information necessary to help guide the surgeon if somebody is high risk for post-operative SAM after mitral valve surgery. However, we have this complete case study with pre and post-operative images with a review, physiology, decision-making in a discussion 
in our channel. You could follow the link below this video or search for the title below. In addition, there is an additional link below this video, how you can quickly and accurately determine the aortomitral angle, or you can search for this video below. I hope you found this presentation very informative and very enjoyable. If so, please smash that like button.